legacy. In the meantime, thank you for being here to speak with us later in the service, Scott, and thank you for your dedication to Sam. <coughs>
and I shape my responses depending on my instructions. In other words, this incredible innovation expertly tells us what we want to hear. Someday, post St. Andrews, many or probably most of you will spend half of your waking and work hours looking into a screen of some sort. And behind that screen is a really savvy software algorithm. It learns as it watches you and it curates what you see. It creates your lens onto the world. And that feels like reality. But the world that is presented to you on that little screen or big screen is built on biases. And those are the biases that are evident in your past viewing habits. The results that you see are based on your search history and the people you meet, the stories you hear, and the opinions that you encounter in this highly curated world will invariably confirm the beliefs and experiences that you already have. If you don't actively fight it, you will fall into a world of rigid beliefs and shrinking perspective. This software wants to map you and to graph you and to stereotype you based on your gender or your ethnicity or your age or your demographic profile or your most recent experiences or some other crude and limiting characteristic that it discovers about you. When I was young, I used to read a lot of science fiction. And one of the genres that fascinated me was the dystopian future where the machines conquered the humans. The reality that we are seeing develop today is only a little different. The machines are actually becoming part of us. Like we've added an alien new organ to control our five senses. So here's the punchline of my advice to each of you today. It's just one word, sort of like the advice that Dustin Hoffman received in the movie The Graduate, which was also one word. It was a great movie, if you haven't seen it. I recommend it. My word is plasticity. Spoiler alert, in The Graduate, the word was plastic. Neuroscientists now understand that your brain has the capacity to adapt and change over the course of an entire lifetime. It's called neuroplasticity. Every new experience that you have is forming new neural pathways and pruning away old ones. Every time you meet a new friend or develop a new skill or go to an unfamiliar place, you are enhancing your cognitive function and fueling your potential for adaptation. Every action that you take that defies routine, that challenges stereotypes, that questions what you thought you knew, is making you more alive and less susceptible to the boring predictability of machine programming. My experiences as a student at St. Andrews were hugely impactful in helping me to learn to be plastic and not rigid. I remember my first night at sit-down dinner at Mr. Ryan's table when he said out loud, I see that your brother's baby blue blazer has matriculated back at St. Andrews along with you. <laughs> of course, I was hugely embarrassed to be out it for wearing hand-me-down clothes in front of the other students. But that wasn't the end of my relationship with Mr. Ryan. I later discovered he was just a lovable curmudgeon. I won the French Prize at graduation, and I learned to be slow <coughs> at taking offense. <coughs> Sandy Ogilvie, who was my advisor, JV baseball coach, and the assistant chaplain, convinced me to join the choir in spite of the fact, or maybe because of the, path, of the fact, I couldn't sing. I think he might have also been a little tired of seeing the marks that I got for accidentally forgetting about chapel. But that's a different story. I love stretching my tiny music 
muscle back then. Sadly, it's still a very tiny muscle. But I learned to enjoy the process of trying things I wasn't good at. Bob Stegman constantly goaded me to take dissenting views in his history classes. And his eyes would grow huge and elated when I expressed an opinion that contrasted with my classmates. I learned that the best arguments are informed by seeing the other side. I had the very good fortune as a child to grow up living around the world since my father was a diplomat. Perhaps being exposed to all of these different cultures and having new classmates every couple of years helped me to develop my plasticity. But I also believe firmly that this personal trait can be developed. In my own life, I continue to try to learn new things and strive to change my habits. I took up yoga this winter. I actually own a yoga mat. I just funded the creation of a new venture capital business in Africa after spending an entire career focused exclusively on investing in America. After many years of feeling very confident in my political opinions, I've become active with organizations working to promote nonpartisan election reforms. Every week, I spend several hours of what I call stretch time. It's the stretching you, it's, it's like the stretching you do for your muscles before an athletic activity, except it's for your brain. Sometimes I read poetry, or sometimes I read a dense and esoteric journal on something like neurology, which is very unfamiliar to me. Sometimes I will attend a random event where I know nobody. Each of you has a unique opportunity here at St. Andrews to build your plasticity, to take new risks and expose yourself to new things, just for the experience. You have an incredible faculty here, and they are here to help you with your stretch time. If you're a three-sport athlete, sign up for a play or take a dance class. If you think your artistic gene completely defines you, sign up for a road race or do the polar plunge. When you have a chance to have lunch with someone you don't know, just take the seat next to them. If you have really strong opinions about something, seek out and talk to someone who thinks differently. Get outside and away from the autopilot of your screens as much as you possibly can. Go explore this incredible 2200-acre campus. Inhale life and let your senses wander. During one of my recent stretch times, I read a bunch of poems by Wendell Berry. He describes the therapy you get from nature as the peace of wild things. I like how that phrase captures the gift we all have to experience a life unprogrammed. I'm going to close now by telling you that I had no idea when I wrote this chapel talk that it would occur during your phone-free weekend. But it certainly is a happy coincidence. It's been a joy to speak with all of you. Thank you.
When you hear the words, Lord, in your mercy, God, in your mercy, your response is, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church, the world, and the St. Andrews community. God, we ask that you guide us in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another, respect each other's dignity, and serve the common good. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us a reverence for the earth as your creation, that we may appreciate our 2,000 plus acres and use its resources rightly and with regard for those who come after us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, especially our teammates, coaches, artists, directors, gardeners, remembering those who pioneered co-education at St. Andrews. May their example inspire those who teach and those who learn, who love and serve the common good. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and all who bear the burdens of pain, bereavement, and suffering in mind, body, or spirit. Help us not to be indifferent to the needs and concerns of others. We remember especially St. Andrew's alumni, Bunker, Diane, Rob, Eric, Grady, and Christy, our friends Anna and Eva, Brooke's mom, Georgia Price, Odile, Kim, John, and Ron. God, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy all who have died, especially J.C., that they may rest in peace with all your saints. God, in your mercy, Gracious God, who gave such grace to your Apostle Andrew, that he readily obeyed the calling of your Son, Jesus, and followed him without delay. Accept the prayers of your people. Visit St. Andrew's School with your love and favor. Enlighten its trustees to invest in a bright future. Be a companion to the staff who take such good care of our school. Endow its teachers and administrators with wisdom and patience. Inspire its students with the spirit of truth and kindness, that they may serve the common good from generation to generation. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and those you love, now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is the school hymn. It is in your home.
Board of Trustees, leave the chapel first, and then we can all leave the way we normally do. Let us bless the Lord.